joining me for the mic drop to give his reaction to Dominic Cummings interview and frankly everything else as well let's do it Patrick Christie's on talk radio Yes, OK, right. It's time now to go to Lesis Bromovsky, a political commentator for Young Voices UK, because for me, this is really sinister, really dangerous stuff. The idea now that if you're a journalist and you manage to get hold of a scoop through a leaked document, use your political now, your journalistic now, or, or in the case of some people, to find it left on a train, and then you report that, you might go to prison for f up to 14 years just for embarrassing our government. So what would have happened, for example to the individual who exposed our health secretary as a liar, right? Or exposed him as a, a bit of a hypocrite. What would have happened there? I mean, Dominic Cummings might be staring down the barrel of a 14 stretch now at the moment, wouldn't he? I suppose he's revealing stuff that's happening, you know, did happen in government. He took pictures from inside government buildings and released them out there. But do we really want to live in this kind of country now where, you know, a journalist has to weigh up whether or not they want to go to prison? You know what? I think this might have the opposite effect. I honestly think it's have the opposite effect. I think it will just create journalistic martyrs who want to do it anyway. But Lettuce Borowski joins me, political contributor to Young Voices UK. Good evening, Lettuce. How are you? Hi, thanks for having me on, Patrick. Thank you for being on. That's fine. Um, so, look, talk to me about this. What's your general view on what's, what's been going on here? 14 yeah, minutes. no, so I completely agree with everything you just said. I think the proposed changes to this legislation are incredibly dangerous. They are a direct attack on both the freedoms of our press and our own civil liberties. Um, you know, free press, freedom of the press, that's the foundation of our democratic society. So I think these proposed limitations should be viewed as a threat. Mm. Um, I mean, what is, what's the role of a journalist if not to expose the truth? Why should it be the role and responsibility of journalists to protect our politicians mm. from their own indiscretions and wrongdoings? Well, that's exactly um, right. I mean, if you don't get caught on camera cheating on your wife, then none of this ever happens, does it? Let's yeah, explain. exactly, exactly. You know, no, so yeah. yeah, with that particular example, with the CCTV leak, it was both extremely embarrassing for the government and Matt, obviously, mm. but it also demonstrated further than that the massive hypocrisy at the highest levels of government. It did. So, yeah. It did, absolutely. And also, I think, oh, again, you know what? I was, I was wrong about this. This keeps happening. But I was wrong about this. Where I thought once that, once that had been exposed, I didn't think that we could have now a prime minister or, or a future health secretary or whatever really standing before us and proposing proposing massive serious restrictions going forward anymore because we'd had the g7 issue we'd had boris Masterless in the back of a taxi we had matt hancock doing whatever he was doing and it looked a bit weird and it certainly felt it and i had to watch <laughs> i had to watch that video on repeat for at least two days in this studio yes. and i was sick everywhere and uh, you know but we had all these people there, so they've stopped caring right but actually, Boris Johnson did manage to stand before us and slap us with some of the potentially most draconian rules that this country has ever seen. So, so there's that. Are you concerned generally now about where free speech might be at in, the, in this country? I know it's part of a, a much wider debate. This is just one element of it, isn't it? No, definitely. Definitely. I mean, this isn't the first time that this government's tried to curtail our freedoms. Obviously, we've had the past year of massive restrictions. Um, but also, it was only a month or so ago that there were proposed changes to the policing bill, mm. which tried to limit protests um, all the way down to the tiny details of how much noise there could be at the protest. I mean, is that not the point of a protest mm. to disrupt, to be heard? Um, so, yeah, this is definitely a step in the wrong direction for freedom, getting our freedoms back, freedom of speech and general civil liberties. Are you concerned about the direction of travel that we're in now in the sense of that, you know, it, it would have been thought unthinkable previously that we would ever have things like you know, mask wearing in, in public, enforced mask wearing in public. It would have been unthinkable to think that we would essentially have mandatory vaccination or something resembling it. And now we're have, so starting to see these things put forward almost on a whim, like you've just said there. You know, limits to protests that actually, frankly, you can end up just getting arrested for basically being there at all, right? And now we've yeah. got this idea, this idea now that if, if a top-level government source, right, handed me something that exposed our Prime Minister as doing something literally criminal, and I reported that, I might do 14 years in prison. I mean, this is more China yeah. than Britain, isn't it? Completely, completely agree. No, it's massively, it's massively dangerous for our society on the whole. And even as far as all these new restrictions or new mandatory vaccinations for care workers or even, uh, you know, to go into nightclubs and things, you have to be double vax now. That's that's coercion. Mm. You know, this this should be entirely unacceptable. And just two years ago, this would have been deemed 
completely unacceptable. No one would ever have thought that we would ever be in a position mm. where the government is controlling so many aspects of our lives. No, absolutely, so, absolutely not. And it's been hopefully it's over soon. But my one of my big concerns really let us is that now they've got the whiff of it, that they just continue with it, because I'm not sure that once you give someone these powers, I mean, even there's so many people, even whose job it is now to stand outside the doors at Tesco's and tell us all to put masks on. Mm -hmm. I've got a feeling a lot of them love it. They love the power, you know, so goodness knows, yeah. what's, goodness knows what's happening inside the home office, you know. Uh, well, there we are. <laughs> Lettuce, thank you very much. Great to have you on board. Lettuce Bromovsky, let's do it again some point soon. Political contributor to Young Voices UK. Some breaking news just flashed up on my screen in front of me. NHS staff, including nurses, paramedics, consultants and dentists in England will receive a 3% pay rise back 